Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody! <laughs> Hello, everybody! Welcome to Tech Tips 28. 28. Special. 27.6. Yeah. Star date. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a special edition, Ray. What day is it? It's Tuesday. No. Oh, uh, yeah, it feels like Tuesday. When you work 365 days a year, there are no holidays, but I can tell by your hat it must be a holiday. New Year's Eve. And the hardware store is closed and everything, <laughs> everything else is closed. Is closed. <laughs> but here we are. It is New Year's Eve. Hey, the post office was open till 4, man. Okay. I had to go to Downingtown. What time is it now? The Thorndale one was, I don't know, 5? Probably 5 or 6. Oh. Well, at any rate, let's shoot this thing for everybody. What is it? Is it Tech Tip one? Yeah, this is Tech Tips, man. Oh. Can't you tell? You're standing in front of the camera. You don't do any other ones, do you? I don't do anything else. <laughs> but at any rate, you were just saying you were looking forward to picking up those gun games because uh, they were they were midway ones. Well, we're going to Felix's. Yeah, uh, we'll, next we'll, week. We'll cover that later. But next week. But I'm but week. I'm going to bust. I'm going to I'm going to ruin your attitude already. I don't have you, one. You said you were going to steal the parts you needed for this one off of off of one of the other two. They're missing off. Those. They're missing off of those both of them too. Mike, don't be that way. You know it's going that to That ambush had everything there except the coil, man. Okay. And is it not done? It is done. Okay. It's also still here. Well, he didn't come down to get it. and the, He could really make a trip for the two, really. Um, What's he need three for? Two's the same as three. It's just one less. These go to 11. I don't think you've ever seen that movie. What? Spi uh, Spinal Tap. I don't know what that is. It's I'm, a band or something? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a Rob Reiner spoof documentary of a, oh. of a fictitious band. And I'm very it sounds like a neat name for a group, man. And, and I'm very surprised that you've uh, never seen it. No. I actually have the album. Well, you wouldn't know the reference. I actually have the album. Dude, that's from the 70s, isn't it? No, that's 80s. 80s? Got to be. Oh, all right. At any rate, well, uh... I don't know what order we want to do this. I don't know. Let's let's knock the emails out early. Um, we have a gentleman from I think he's in Israel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, his his name is E Y A L. Uh, I don't. I'm not even Errol, sure. I guess. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. But er uh, Errol. Errol. I I don't know. But he asked us very nicely Errol. to to help him with a problem that he's having with a Capcom Pinball Magic. And he... Um, yeah, I got his eBay note. Yeah, he, he detailed here, because he was looking... We have some Optos, some NOS Optos left over. And, yeah. And he's, uh, he's got a problem where, I guess, the, the game thinks that one Opto is reporting all the time, because when he turns it on... It's trying to clear a ball. It just, it just keeps firing that associated assembly. Um, he sent us a couple of pictures, and I guess by the pictures you saw that there was some hokey wiring on the Opto itself, maybe. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to respond to his email thing because I was gathering well, information. Well, Those we're machines are not very common. I've only ever seen one to three. Yeah, well, we're, this is our response, and I'll, I'll email him and tell him to watch And I this. thought Lindley had one, but he didn't. He okay. sold it a couple years ago. You don't have one. All right, but, but you have been working on one recently. Yeah, with a similar problem, only in a... Uh, drop target area, the magic, the M and the magic, Okay. the center drop targets. Um, it has a full-size um, micro switch that actually gets actuated and tells the machine that the drop target's down. All the other ones work fine. However, if you do them out of order and hit the M, it reports, it, it goes on and off. But if you do it by itself, it makes no recognition of it. In test mode, it does the same thing this guy's machine's doing. It gives you a dead switch indication okay which tells me there's something wrong with the board because i've unplayed i have unplugged all the playfield switches it still comes up dead they should all report open which is what he should do in this case is yep. is is uh, get the playfield out of the equation entirely right and pinball magic from what i understand is a older capcom game and the fact it has some kind of interconnect board that doesn't the brace shot doesn't yeah so that's a later one so 
you, you want to unplug the, the greens and whites, I think, are the same switch colors that Capcom uses as Bally Williams. Disable his whole switch. The, the I'll whole... just simply unplug it, and that'll, that'll take all of the inputs that the MPU might get. And it should all be open. All the switches should be open. Okay, the only question I have there is with the switch inputs... On an opto, they should be closed, so it should register open switches for optos, but yeah, it's still... You're killing me. How do you do switch tests with your... With your... Or how do you how do you get into that test when you've unplugged? Oh, although I guess the playfield harness is different than the coin door harness, which is where your diagnostic controls correct. are. Is that they correct? Are, that is right. Yeah. So so the only the only switch input that you're going to leave. Uh, They're right in the center of the board, down at the bottom of the interconnect board. There are two little 100 spaced pin connectors. You unplug both, or one set, just one set. So disconnect your playfield. But leave your cabinet switches intact, right. so that you can physically test. They're separate anyway. And if you get the same result where you go, where you scan through your test and it's showing that one uh, opto dead, well, it's got nothing to do with your opto because it's not seeing it; it's disconnected. You've got a board problem. And I suspect that's what it is. Any any switch input that is indicating dead, I bet you if you got documentation on Capcom, it's going to say that's a board problem. That's never going to be a switch problem because the switch problem is always going to either be stuck closed, noted, or stuck open in the case of an opto. Right. So you're not getting that on, on the drop target I have and this guy's problem here. You're not getting that. You're getting dead. Dead means board problem. I don't know uh, of where to get anything for those boards. They're surface mount chips. Which means? Which means? I don't even know if they're available. Not serviceable, generally. Yeah, I, d I don't, I don't uh, know um, if they're available. And well, I, they definitely aren't available. I don't do repairs on surface uh, stuff. I guess a, a, sh a, a sh you know, a real long shot would be... Um, well, Gene Cunningham. Would be, be either Gene or PSPA, Pinball Spare Parts Australia. They have some of that stuff, but not a lot. See, that's a big board, man, and that has all your switch matrix on it. So that's a hard go, and I'm still fighting the repair uh, on that. Yeah, you've been challenged to repair one, and you can't. I don't know you what can't, to do with it. You can't do a board repair to surface mount because it just ain't it ain't made for it. If you're careful, you <clears> can <throat> lift pins up one at a time. The, the switch matrix chips look like 16 pin, but they're very hard to do. You really should have a um, a hot air workstation. You know, I wonder what Jimmy's doing besides blowing up your phone. I don't know. You should really have a hot air station to do that, not not a pencil iron. Yeah, Who I've had? done I've done it before with small chips like that with a pencil iron. And you're risking pulling the flat pads off the board, very risky. Well, now my phone's blowing up. Yeah, well he knows we're here. He is. Jimmy, we're shooting tech tips, man. Go do something. I told him we were working here until I got home, and I'm gonna just I don't know. So, at any rate, we we appreciate. This gentleman's questions, and they were very politely. Uh, I appreciate him watching. I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool. All the way from the sorry, we don't have an easy man. answer. We don't. We may not even have a difficult answer. We may have a no answer in that in that case. That's neat, Mike. Across yeah. the world, man. Isn't yeah. It? Wow. Because if he can't get parts, I don't know. It may be the end of some uh, some of these Capcoms. And uh, well, see, I haven't moment. investigated where to go. I don't know. I don't okay. Well, in that case, um, when we do solve Joe's problem with his, which is similar. Uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll add an addendum to this and we'll update you as to what we were capable of doing. I can tell you this, that parts thing we got from Robert was probably the biggest parts yeah, we, pile that I we were the That was brand new, man. We were the biggest Capcom supplier for a little while. but Marco all even on. wanted to buy this yeah. match. <laughs> wow. But that wasn't in there. and You it, know what I needed? I was up there at his place and I was repairing a sling assembly and it had a broken link. And I was wishing I had one of them things you had. The sling assemblies. I still have I still have two sets of those left. Then you went next time, or did you, did you fix no, it? No, I fixed it. Okay. But I had to punch the thingy out. The, I stocked that. I've got two sets of them I left. I know. Well, they break. Them links break. Okay. I have two sets of those left. That's it. Wow. I had like what thirty sets. <laughs> I can see why people bought them. They break. Well, and how many how many flipper assemblies did I have? Fifty. <laughs> Jimmy. You can repair those, Mike, though. You can use the same link. It's not spaced any different than a Bally. Yeah. It is a little thinner, though, i got to say, okay? Okay. You taking... <laughs> I want to get rid of your phone. You better take yours out. <laughs>
Mine <laughs> mean, only went off once. Yeah, no, wait. Wait for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that, that handles him. I, we didn't give him an answer other than... Well, yeah, we did. There ain't an we easy gave one. him an answer. I'm struggling as well with it. Yeah, they're tough. Um, but I can tell you one thing about what's wrong with his, and it's fresh in my mind, and, and it's another reason why I wanted to wait to answer it, because it was a, a thing I ran into just recently with James yeah. last, last time I was there. Yeah. So um, reality is it's probably a board problem. There's nothing wrong with the Opto. So buying the part... That we have listed that yeah, do that's it. not that's not it no you can go into test mode and pulse those switch test mode and pulse those optos with your finger but the one that's dead is going to be dead because yeah, the mpu be... ain't recognizing the input yeah anyway yeah so board but uh, well i guess the flip side of that is if he does disconnect the play field and the error goes away it will go away i did it to joe's it goes away If you disconnect the other side from the switch matrix board to the MPU, it goes away. There's a cable. Now you a just big ribbon cable. Now you just lost me. All right. The chip on the interconnect board between the MPU driver board has a ribbon cable. It's really wide. It's a dual inline pin gray cable. Okay. Okay. If you disconnect that, you're disconnecting the lamp and switch inputs. That's all that board does is lamp and switch. Okay. All right, you take away the short on that board, and the MPU says, oh, everything's happy. Because it doesn't get a short from that short. Okay, so then this is even, this is a little bit deeper into the answer then, which is... I wanted to find out which board it was. Well, what was I saying when it's you deeper interrupted because, me again? It's um, deeper because... Okay, if you disconnect the play field from the interconnect board, and the problem is still there. Right. And you then you disconnect the interconnect board from the MPU yeah. and the problem is still there, it's MPU. Yeah, do this when if it's it, off, of course. If it goes away, then the problem's on the interconnect board. Of course, I don't think it would matter. I uh, figured what I did. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So you want to isolate where the problem is by starting at one end, disconnect the play field. Problem goes away, problem's on the play field at the opto. Right. Problem still there? Disconnect the interconnect board from the MPU. Right. Problem still there? MPU. Yeah. Problem goes away? Interconnect board. Right. Beyond that. Now you have to reboot the machine, though. Not unplugging the play field. Well, yeah, even unplugging the play field, because you know how you got to refresh troubleshooting uh -huh. when you change a lamp. It doesn't just go away like yeah. on pin two thousand. You got to refresh that. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. So you'll have to refresh it either with the Start button, I think that's how it's done on that, or turning it off and on and yeah. going back into test mode, which is awkward, but I think start button refreshes it. You go in and out of troubleshooting, and it makes that pop noise, you know, and yeah. then it shows you errors, lamps out, and such, you know. Yeah, so much for Capcom, you know. It's a shame that you, you, if you look at them, they, they were trying really hard to build nice equipment. Yeah. I mean, it's way nicer they, than Bally Williams. And but not people didn't want to pay for it. But they weren't around long enough to get established and get stable. And they're now too, here, their you're, machines are too expensive, man. You're just out to lunch trying to fix these things now. They were too expensive. Them coin guys weren't going to buy yeah. them. You know, if you look at what most machines were made, it was either because they were niche and popular, which is kind of rare, like Adams or whatever, but. Most of the machines that were sold were, were inexpensive. Yeah, cheapies. Yeah, well, that's all they wanted, something to put out and change their route up. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, is their business model for that would work today because the market wants that now. Yeah. They didn't, that, they didn't want that back then. They wanted cheap. Now they, they're looking for quality. They're looking for Jersey Jack and Stern. They're looking for these guys to do well, quality. It's too late. And, yeah, um, Capcom would fit in great now, but so be it. I've, I've, I've had it up to here with Capcom, Ray. We're at it. We're done with that discussion. Oh, you don't like them? We got one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not thrilled with it. No, I wouldn't go out seeking I mean, it's, an, it's a nice game, but I, you know, I've got it reasonably priced and considering what we did to it. And yeah, there ain't a whole lot of interest in it. Nobody wants no, that. That's and because I, they don't want to take a risk. On yeah, it. And, and no wonder. I mean, we had that Airborne. I thought that thing was neat. Well, it was. I watched your play. I mean, it was neat. It had a lot of nobody stuff. Nobody really there. wanted that either. I, I don't think up, nobody knew how to play. I play ended up giving it away at cost. Wasn't that kind of complicated to play? The timing involved? Yeah, it was, it was an unusual game. But to look at it, it was just it was so well built. And a lot of thought went into the design. It was a nice, nice game. Um, 
Wait, I was done with Capcom. Yeah, I know. No, I don't want to talk about Capcom There's anymore. not that many made, not that many left, and it's not a popular collector's machine. Of course, with, with the exclusive <clears throat> collectors, the Big Bang Bar comes to mind, and Pinball Magic might be second or third. And, yeah. But other than that, you're right, all the other titles... There aren't many. No. And you struggle to own and support oh, it. Oh, God, Flipper Football, nobody wants that. Right. You struggle to own it and support it because if you play it and break plastics or something else, man. Yeah, you're sunk. What's next, Mike? You remember DJ Big Sexy Berlin? I remember that name. He's the guy with the Cadillac thumbnail. Okay. I keep bringing that up to you. Um, do, do, do. Hi, guys. Thanks for answering my questions. You ready for this one? Yeah. Oh. I'm confused. What would be a few titles of pins for under $2,000 to get started on? Well, that, that's an impossible question to answer because... Depends on locality. Yeah, it depends on where you are and what's just kind of what's available around you and what's so, how badly does somebody need money to get rid of something or, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't even know how to answer that. I thought he was talking about jukeboxes because he goes on to say, <clears throat> I love jukeboxes. But can't afford seven or eight grand for a rock Ola bubbler type deal. So what would be a dependable floor standing CD jukebox on a budget? What would be a dependable floor standing CD jukebox on a budget? Keep in mind, I think he's in Germany because his name has got Berlin in it. Oh, well, NSMs were made there. And maybe they're supported there. They ain't supported here. Well, they're made there, and they are supported there, yeah. They're still in business, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Okay. They make internet jukes. Yeah. Okay. Unless they disappeared within the last couple of years. They don't have a hold in the American market for internet jukes. Touch tunes. Yeah. And there's another one. I forget what the name of it is. Those people control the, uh, the internet for, uh, market for well, We've got one on eBay. What is that thing? It's a hyper beam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... it's Which, it certainly wouldn't be worth shipping to you, but if you find That's something like... That's a very early juke. Something like that locally there, um, you know, I don't know. Our price on that, what is that? I, I got 350 bucks on it or 400 bucks or something, and it works. I mean, we haven't overhauled it or reconditioned it or anything. But just the fact that it rolled in and works at, at its age without being reconditioned, that's a pretty good selling. It is. Um, yeah. So, find you an NSM, I guess. If you were over here, that wouldn't be the answer. If you were over here, the answer would be, what, a rock? Row. AMI row. Row, or, yeah. yeah. You might find that over there as well. And hey, they made a million different models of them, and, and generally none of them are worth a damn thing. Um, yeah, you, you almost you almost don't even want to fix them. If you if you get it and it works, you can, around here, you can get it for three or four hundred bucks working, and when it breaks, you throw it out and go get another. Darn near. So, there's all i got to say about jukeboxes, Ray. Because if I continue to talk about jukeboxes, I'll tell you what I really think of them. Worse than Capcom. <laughs> yeah, this is, going, this is going nowhere good fast. Well, no, that's all right. Everything is uh, relative. Jukeboxes. Like, come on. Uh, Did you ever put money in one? Not recently. Did you ever? Probably. Really? Yeah. I don't know, I'm 42 years old, so I must have at some you point. Must have? I had to. Not much. Jukeboxes. I was, if I had a quarter, it was going in the pinball machine. Uh -huh. And if they didn't have the pinball machine, I was leaving. You left. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, we're, I'm almost done with notes here. Okay. Tim Casada says, yeah, and I knew this was going to happen when I said it. We need to see Ray's ga game room. Mm. Mm. Really? Yeah. There's not much air. I no. fix things. That's why I don't own much. It's like yeah. any other technique. Your game room is better than mine. I got nothing. Yeah, well, I tried to give you stuff, and you don't want it. You better believe I don't want it. Uh, See, you could, you could have a game room, right? Then I wouldn't want to go home. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to be here, you and then I, and then I wouldn't want to go home. Well, I, I remember your comment. You I don't want to look at it at home. I can't be far enough away from these things. Okay. Uh, PBR, Pinball Reviewer, um, on your last tech tips. I have to say, this has to be the best tech tips yet. 
I don't really get it. I thought we were off, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, I enjoyed the reactions on Ray's face when various pins were, were brought up and he'd give a look of disgust or surprise. Um, uh, here, I can, I can duplicate the look of disgust, Ray. You ready? What? I'm putting Frankenstein in the dumpster. Oh, God. Oh, come on, <laughs> That's why I took it home. I was afraid you were Oh, yeah, I wanted to. You couldn't do it by yourself. You'd have to have Brian putting. Oh, I I I got the I got the hammer around here. I oh, can, now now that's very I can, cold. I can do that thing in. That's cold, man. Um, CNK uh, Chris CNK YouTube. Um, he called me a regular freaking Edgar Winter. Me. What's an Edgar Winter? Uh, the. Hey, you could play Edgar Winter. Yeah, wasn't that, didn't he do that song? What was that freaking Frankenstein. stupid? Frankenstein again? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's on, that, it's on the pin. It, oh, it is? No wonder I want to throw that thing out. Yeah. I'm a regular a freaking Edgar Winter. Edgar Winter used to play a lot of keyboards. Yeah. For a white-haired albino rock guy. You know? Yeah, you know, I was I never really followed him. I, I kind of, if you want to go into that realm, um, Keith Emerson. I yeah, like Keith Emerson. ELP, yeah. He was a friggin' beast. Yes, he was. He was a monster. I, I got a bunch of that I stuff. I used to play a little bit of his stuff, but it's, it's darn near over my head. Um, Brain salad surgery. Yes. <laughs> um, the song uh, Benny, Benny, the, Benny the Bouncer. Uh -huh. I can play the solo from that. Me. Uh, well, damn, I just threw a challenge out to myself. I used to be able to play the solo from that. Yeah, that, that I got a bunch of ELP stuff, man. You're right. That guy was nuts. Wow. Ghost Quarter. Hey guys, I donate to the cause, but I've got too many expenses right now. Mm. Well, that's okay. Uh, you donate to the cause by making a comment or watching or whatever. Subscribing. Or yeah. On subscription. Yeah, you're. Hey man, you're good with us. Uh, you know, we don't see us begging for money, but so uh, don't feel bad, Ghost Quarter. We we appreciate you, man. And um, for for those others. We've been receiving a few more gifts in the yeah, mail. Chris W. Yeah, whoever it was. Yeah, well, that that's awesome, man. Um, rare cool item says Target Alpha is not a bad pen. Well, it really is, and you played it. You sort of like yeah, it. It sucks. It's an um, M with chimes. What yeah. can I tell you? It's a waste of time. Um, Did Jimmy tell you he bought that and another machine? Oh, he got another one he didn't tell me about? He's afraid. What the hell else did he get? The countdown. <laughs> He got another, he got, are you, did he really get a yes, countdown? Yes, he did, it's in my truck. <laughs> and you know what? It's in better shape than the one we just did. He's lost his fucking mind. It, it's in better shape than the one we just did. What's he going to do with that? I don't know. How he many got, pins has he got now? He got like 80? It, he bought it for 200 He's a fucking pin hoarder. He bought it for two and a he, quarter. He lost his fucking mind. Yeah. Two and a quarter, I wouldn't give you two quarters for it. <laughs> oh. You better edit all this out. <laughs> fucking junk. Don't look Jim, at the camera. Get over here. Jim, you've me. lost your fucking mind. Get over here and look at the camera and see. <laughs> what are you going to do with all this fucking junk? Well, now he is up to 30. And if I catch you working on it, I'll break your fingers. Oh, I have to. It's in the truck. We're already we're already broke. I'm, I'm going to do it at home. I'm abbreviate it. He can rubber it and clean it. I'll just make it work. Um... Wow. Is that destroyed the moment? <laughs> Thought my attitude was bad a minute ago. It's Happy New Year. <laughs> More Can fucking I... pinball machines. What the fuck? I could tell why he didn't tell me. Because I call him a nut. Oh, well. He lost his damn mind. He ain't live, so he ain't going to be able to see this until later. He got no room for these things anyways. No, he don't. He's putting them in Brenna's mic. Uh, Flesh Wound says Gene Rayburn hosted the match game. Neat. Gene Rayburn was his name. I don't name. remember him being tall, though. He was tall, and he had this microphone he had that on the stick. Voice, though. Yeah, he was just funny. I'm going to get you a microphone on the end of a stick like, like that. Okay. He had a microphone, and he'd hold it down here, but it was on a stick, and it came up to... Anyway. Uh, he's dead. Really? Yeah. You know who else is dead? Because I, I, I Googled Gene Rayburn when I saw that. Well, times go by. Yeah, he's been dead a while, but... Um, uh, the guy that hosted uh, Family Feud. No kidding. Yeah, he was he in played Running, on. He was in Running Man. Yeah, and he played on um, Hogan's Heroes. Did he? God, he was really young then. Yeah, yeah, he did. Okay, well, he's really dead. 
Sorry to sorry to give you the dead person of the week. Oh, don't we don't need news. a dead person of the week. Yeah, well, he's been dead a while, so it was dead person of the week a while ago. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Hey, we could. We could do Jimmy's pin of the week, whatever he bought this. Yeah, week. Jimmy's pin going in the dumpster of the week. No, every, he buys one every week, so Jimmy's. Pin yeah, the Jimmy. Week. Jimmy wasted money again. Uh, special of the week. Not to bring it up. Buying again. a five dollar pin for two hundred and some dollars that needs two thousand dollars worth of work. Eat, sleep, pinball. My guess on why they don't use nails. Uh, for the pop, the the pop bumper nails, yeah. why they don't use them anywhere else, we we know the answer to that, right. and that is they show through through the top of the playfield. Correct. Um, but he he pointed that out, and he also pointed out that monster monster bash. Everybody wonders what those spikes are in the middle of the playfield on the, on the top, scratching their head. Same thing. Those are spikes to hold the Dracula the Drac track in, and they Plastic, look plastic knobby things. And know. they look stupid because they're right in the middle of the playfield. Yeah, right. And you can see them, and they and you're like, what the hell were they doing there? Right. Um, oh, our shoplifting star star that we mentioned. Shoplifting. Yeah, her name is Winona Ryder. Oh, really? That lady? Yes, that lady. Wow, she. Wow, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. Winona. She played in a couple of weird movies. Yeah, she was in a lot of stuff. Don't you have a sister? Uh, I don't know. No. That's all I got for there. All right. Here. Countdown. Uh -huh. Here, let's cover this. What a waste. Okay. Um, well, we left off with the tech tips, which was to transfer all the crap on the bottom from one to the other, um, which was not rocket science. But uh, we did. We run. We ran into a couple of issues. What were they, Ray? Well, Mike, the first thing you found was another. I found this, but you took the other one apart and somebody glued this in. That's the shelf that, that holds the target in the up position. Right. And this isn't the correct shelf. You might notice it's square or rectangular. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be at the one end of a sh shelf that the target can ramp up on, and then yeah. the other end is supposed to be flat. Okay. This guy put... <laughs> nice. Yeah, this ain't going to work. No. The uh, target might bounce up and come back or might not even go up. So oddly enough, the two that were on the working game were bad and the two that were on the scrap play field were good. So right. stole them. Uh, Cleaned them, stole them, mm -hmm. mounted the boards, washed the boards, and then you took care of this wrong. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was a wrong bracket. It was a jet bump bracket. We're a kicker. Yeah, we I showed that was, last time. Okay, that wasn't a big deal. And then all the other little parts you put back on. Yeah. Uh, wash these, that's nice. Well, there was another drop target problem, which resulted in me uh, putting new stickers on all of them. Yeah. Um, the Factor Williams drop targets were really made thin at the bottom. And... Uh, when they get reset and it comes up against the stop here, they often do this. Oh. Most of the time, it'll actually bust the whole thing off. Um, it doesn't matter. There's still another shelf left here, but when when it breaks down here, it starts getting but it'll bind and get stuck and yeah, yeah. start to get goofy. The aftermarket has made these differently. They are thicker down here by about twice. Okay. Uh, you have to reset your stops for your up or your down. Because that changes that. Right, right. But, uh, um, if it was my machine or our machine, Ray, I would have put new drop targets in it. Uh, you remember the sales job on this, which was keep keep the keep the price down. Keep it, you know, we're doing the full job, but be uh, be cost conscious on it. So um, you know, between the scrap play field and and this, I actually had uh, eleven good drop targets, and I just picked out the six best and put new decals on they them. They weren't available. They used to sell this assembly with this on it. Just like this, only with no screws, of course. Just the bracket okay. with the studs on it, because these break off on small. But they don't sell it anymore. I haven't seen it being remade yet at the moment. But that's a common part. Fits, yeah, it fits a lot. Yeah. Okay, so there's that. What else? Um, <clears throat> chamfered uh, the chamfering yeah, the job. the holes for the uh, the lane guide or um, yeah, the side side supports. Yeah, whatever you call those. Um, the factory drills the hole this way. Square. Yes, and does not chamfer it for the um, 
flat screws in. You can let the screw do it itself, but it probably won't. And they'll stick up and look crappy. Um, they just they'll don't fight fit you. right. Yeah. That's just not right. Plus, you'll end up stripping the wood out because it's a wood screw. This is what you should do. And if you don't have a chamfering tool, which comes in a couple different sizes, it's a wood tool for uh, furniture. Okay. Uh, which is a short stubby, and it's not a drill bit. It's like a it's like a cone. I didn't have that. Yeah, you can use a drill bit of the size of um, the head the of the screw or the head of the screw, and just like you said, set the clutch down to one so it does not. Yeah. The problem with doing it with a drill bit is the hole is already drilled. And it'll run away on you and if make a mess. you set the drill driver or you have a drill. And thinking you can hold it. Yeah, it'll suck it into the hole and now you'll have the whole hole that Big size. Big friggin' mess. That's a problem, yeah. So you want to pay attention when you're doing that or you can ruin what you're doing. Okay, but generally it looks like this. Ray, I don't know, pick a hole. Yeah, let me... Uh, I'm on one, so... Uh, it doesn't right, matter, it's the old one, okay. Ta -da. I like touch. Chamfered. Yeah. You don't push on it. So that the screw seats properly when it's done. So I went ahead and I did all those because that, that part of the job is coming up. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, you know, I, I had one other problem, right? The T-nuts um, for these playfield mounting brackets, yes. they had eight gallons of paint in them. They had so much paint in them that I had to knock them out and replace them. I don't know why. I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, remember this thing came and it had six T nuts in it. Oh, they cleared the T nuts. And, and you thought, well, that's odd. Why does uh, it have six T nuts in it? The yeah, they cleared they cleared them a lot. Uh, so I just banged them out and put new ones in. Okay. Well, you could have run the tap through them. Or yeah, I could have, but I don't have a tap set here. Really? Yeah. Well, you only need like two taps. Huh? Yeah, I have. I have. A, oh, I have a leg tap here because no. that's the one I use. You need six thirty two and eight thirty two. I'll okay. have to stock it up. I don't have that. Okay. Because most of the time I'm not working anyway. Yeah, that's sort of an advanced thing anyway. Tap and die thing. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh, where do we go from here, Ray? And I, like I said, I think there's a, there are a couple options here. Um, one is we could put the harness back on at this point. I, I kind of don't well, think. What are you inclined to do? Put top side stuff? Yeah, I, I kind of I, I kind of think I'd rather go to the top side at this point, um, only because. Um, I don't know. I th well, what'd you what'd you learn over doing the last six or eight you did? You try different ones and see what it does. Different manufacturers you do different things to. I don't know. I, I guess I would do the top side stuff. The wood. I, I, I think every other time I've I've actually done I do I do the top side last, but I was thinking about it and I don't see I don't see a reason to do that. I mean, uh, well, first off, you got to do the top side to inventory what's going to need be needed here. Yeah. Because it may need a ramp or something. Well, we do have to order a ramp yeah. for this. Um, I, I guess the reason I thought to um, build the top side first is just in the order that this came apart at this point. Um, we took the, the harness off and the top side is still there and the top side is still there. So why not put that over, hook up the harness and be, you know, I don't less know. Less to handle. I, right. I think it's less handling. Um, but I don't think, in the grand scheme of things, it makes a big difference. Uh, the harness could go on now. Um, Moral of the story here is this is a nice winter project for somebody that wants to do this on their own. Yeah. Um, if you take this type of thing somewhere to have somebody do it for you... You're going to get hurt. It's money. Yeah. Um, unless you find a hobbyist that wants to donate their time to you. And that does happen. Yeah. But um, you, you won't get him to do it twice. I mean, minimum. <laughs> Once is all. I have to move on to another hobbyist. Actual work time on this on this complete job. Yeah. And this is not including Felix's paint time. Correct. Just art, you and you and me, time on it. Realistically, minimum 50 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's not 50 hours of talking. That's minimum 50 hours of fixing something, work. Um, the less you know you do the shorter the time is if you abbreviate it leave this on leave all this alone leave this on all right you're now taking time away but why would you want to do that why yeah well that's not that's not the workmanship that we do and um, 
And, and you know, um, Ray, you know, it used to be people would wonder, you know, you take your car into the shop for a brake job. You can do a brake job. I mean, obviously, I can do a brake job. We can do a brake job. The, the parts, you can get a set of brakes for a common car, what are they, 20 bucks? Yeah, something like Right? That. And you can do the job in an uh, hour, hour and a half. Right. Right? Not if a big... You, not a big deal. If you have jack stands yeah. and a, a jack. Not a big job. You, you don't want to go out to thing with a uh, you take, okay. bumper jack. Or... You take your car into the shop. How much does a brake job cost? Any more? I don't yeah. know. I haven't paid for one in years. I don't know. Well, that's because you still do it yourself. Hmm. But 150 Three? bucks, 200 yeah. bucks, maybe 250 rotors, bucks, whatever. It usually takes rotors. Yeah. For, for the same job. And 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 why why does a why does an auto shop charge you eighty dollars an hour? They're there for profit to make. Uh, well, not it's not even just for profit. It's almost for just survival, because they got the overhead. They got to pay the rent. They got to pay the electric bill. They got to pay workman's comp. They got to pay uh, for heat. They got to pay uh, what are those funky taxes you just well, sent out? They got to pay earned income and yeah. earned so, income tax. So all of that stuff rolled into a ball. When we put in 50 hours of work on something, that's what is that? 50 hours times times the labor rate. I mean that that is what it is. And you know what? You just 50 times 80 is so 4,000 bucks, right? It's not practical. Yeah, I mean that's and that's nowhere near what I mean. We're we're not going to charge. We're not even going to charge half of that. But Yet we have the same expenses, right? We carry the same parts overhead on, you know, between your truck, and we have the same expenses to be True. in this business. So this is why, generally, this is a job for a hobbyist because people can't afford to pay us to do this work, and we can't afford to do this work because we can't charge enough. Right. So yeah, there's that again. It's a catch twenty-two. Yeah, right? I mean, we take the jobs. And this is why you and I, we don't work 40-hour weeks. We work 80-hour weeks or 90-hour weeks. And we're here on New Year's Eve doing this goofy shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So, Ray, we're closing the pinball store. We're getting out of the pinball business. We're going to um, open up a restaurant. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, just for something else to do. Maybe we'll start a band. I can't play anything, Mike. I'm too old. Nobody else. Oh, you're leaving me out, is that it? Oh, that's <laughs> we'll, cool. We'll start a band and it don't include you. <laughs> I can carry the road equipment. Like Rick does. So that's it. I don't know. We haven't shown them really. I guess we showed them a the little chamfering thing. I, I don't know. Um, well, we showed the next stage of uh, what we're We doing. showed them that we cared about them, right? We're in here filming on New Year's Eve. We said hello to everybody. We thanked... Uh, this is also true. We thanked some people for uh, for donating to the cause. That's cool. I don't know what I'm going to do for the music intro this week, Ray. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like... I'm feeling inclined only slightly to record something, but I don't know if I'll get around to it. So that's it. What are you doing for New Year's Eve, man? Nothing. That's not very exciting. I'll probably sit at home and do uh, some paperwork, or I gotta do some invoices <laughs> from repairs that I did. People like to have record once in a while, not always, but I make my notes when I'm in the field, and then I come home, convert them, and print them into something that looks nice and mail them. If people want it, yeah, know, some don't. Right? You remember we were talking? that. Remember we were talking about seeing jukeboxes in, in videos. Or in uh, movies, yeah, yeah. seeing jukeboxes in movies. I was watching a, I was video. I don't know what I was doing, but chances are I was video editing because that's all I do when I'm home. Um, <clears throat> uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Four. I don't know. There's probably a hundred different Nightmare on yeah, Elm I've Street. Yeah, I've not ever watched that. But at any rate, Nightmare on Elm Street Four. One of the scenes opened up with a song playing and they were zoomed in on a jukebox. It was a record jukebox and it had the, the platter where the, where the record played on top, right? Okay. Chill, showing you. Wow. And it was playing and they were zoomed in on this platter and you know where the needle was? 
it was over on the paper of the 45. It was spinning around and the navel was sitting on the paper. <laughs> they didn't care. And it was, and it was, the scene was starting out and it was there for at least 10 seconds. Because I mean, I, I, I looked up and I looked up again and I said, well, wow, that thing's just spinning around, and the needle's well, no, just paper, it's not, sitting it's on. It's not the, even ever supposed to get in there. <laughs> it was all the way up against the spindle, sitting on the paper spinner. <laughs> See, that's that. Somebody forced it because the adjustment won't even allow it go. That, that thing's broke. Yeah, it's broke. Yeah. So I noticed that. Wonder what kind it was. I don't know. Yeah, I, I do notice. Point up equipment in movies they, they use. Do the world a favor. If you see a jukebox somewhere, help it into a dumpster. <laughs> oh, I, I sort of like those here and there. Uh, and we just sold our project because I, I stopped liking it. <laughs> <laughs> they got a good deal on that. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was there. I had to accumulate all that stuff, man. That was bad from the start. You yes, know, it was. Getting paid for doing work. What do we do? That. We, we restored it. Well, it wasn't really restored, but we re reconditioned, borderline restored a Peppy the Clown. Correct. And the guy. That included pickup delivery of the machine, your work on it, and, and uh, cosmetic work on it. Yeah. And that included um, some labor that I had done for the mm -hmm. same guy. So, and he gave us a project 1468 rock old. Terrible. It had a somebody tried to make a plastic dome out of where the glass curved glass. You cannot do that. Ray, we got fucked. Did we? Yeah, on that that deal, we got fucked. So they tried that, and it had the wrong speakers <clears throat> in it. It just was a basket case that, uh, uh, like anything else, you know, you look at it, and you're thinking, well, it looks. Yeah. Like it's all there. So we spent 2000 in parts for it, and uh, it sat around, and now we just sold the whole project for $2,000. Yeah, I just can't see the, the end of it. Like, we got uh, out of I it. Just, well, I can, I, well, I can see the end of this week's tech tips, because the camera says three minutes. Three minutes? Well, I don't want to dwell on the lost effort that we had there. I mean, we yeah, did, if we did that, we'd spend all our time dwelling. We converted a lot of jukebox that were in that back area over the years to something that somebody now enjoys, and they bought so I'm not sad about giving that thing up. No. That was a trip involved um, with Jimmy to get a pin, and then I turned it into that. Plus yes, that's got... fine. But I just now found out he got another pin. Yeah, well. He just can't be out. Yeah, can't help himself. He's out of his fucking mind. Um, so at any rate... Um... <laughs> You're saying that just... To... Yeah, he'll hear it, and he know, but he knows it's true. Oh. He's got to. Jimmy, go go find the closest mirror, go look at it, and then tell that person he's out of his fucking mind. Um, so, uh, Ray, it's New Year's. Uh, happy 2014 to everybody. Yep. Um, 20... One nice thing about Jimmy having so many pins is since we now no longer really have very many here, um, our feature pin of the week for probably the next month is going to be something out of his collection. So coming up on Sunday will be a surprise from Jimmy's basement. I don't know what it's going to be, but he's got everything there. So, well, Mike, in all fairness, he's not outstanding. There's a lot of my customers do the same thing. It's what keeps me busy. They're always buying. Yeah. And I repair and make money off repair. Yeah. I really don't have no comment. He asked me about it. And I, oh, I, I didn't say anything. To the effect, other than that's nicer than the one we just did. Well, maybe that encouraged him, I guess. But then it was up to him to talk to Lloyd about pricing, and I, I, I was wandering around the warehouse. I didn't. I brought that back just simply to try to fix the one yeah, we I know. had. Yeah, I wouldn't have taken it for free. We're down to one minute. We've so, announced. We've announced what the uh, pin feature of the week is. Did you? What is it? I don't know. It's a surprise from Jimmy's basement. Oh, is that? Because I don't know what. Okay. Um, and then next week's tech tip is going to be number thirty. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. No, I don't know what okay, number well, it's going to be. What are you going to feature? Uh, we well, we're going to we're going to order some parts for this taxi playfield, so that's going to be on hold. We're going to skip that. Okay. And we're going to um, take it on the road, right? We're going to Felix. We're going to go see Felix. All right, let's do that. And we're going to have him walk us through um, walk us through the paint shop and show us. Uh, 
show us what a professional arcade uh, paint shop looks like. Right. No paint pens. Okay. So that's it. Zero minutes. Um, what's that? The apple is falling, Ray. It's 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 falling. It's falling. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm too, gonna fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll both be asleep. Um, happy New Year, everybody. We appreciate having you. Happy New Year. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Facebook right now. You can keep up to date with all of us here at the shop and what we